Good afternoon. I am uh, Dr. Branka Franichovic. My affiliation is University of Bradford, United Kingdom. And uh, this presentation concerns the field of forensic archaeology. Decomposition occurs in most environmental conditions. And the pace at which these changes transpire, as well as their common appearance, hugely vary over timescales. Body parts are additionally often accompanied by variance coverings, aiding the complexity of clandestine recovery and identification. Nevertheless, the decay in the wrapped microenvironment is not sufficiently understood. For example, if a body is wrapped in plastic, such as cling film or a bin liner, it may decompose slower in comparison to unwrapped body parts. On the other hand, the role of the covering could also be to limit access to insects. But once they have reached through to the body tissue, the wrapping may provide shelter from weathering conditions and allow faster decomposition. However, it is also possible that the fabric of clothing itself makes no significant impact on the decomposition rates. So the aim of the study is to test the association between body wrapping and the early postmortem history of individual body parts. How ambient temperature shapes the decay pattern is tested by recording the viable count, gram stain, body mass loss, and morphological changes of the remains. This study advances taphonomic knowledge of dismembered covered remains in the absence of flies and insects and is important for replication in control conditions. The findings are applicable to archaeology and refer to the increasing field of microbial archaeology of mummified and covered skeletonized remains. I highlight the work of Chavka et al., where paleomicrobiological analysis belonging to the group of saprophytes fungi were identified from the mummy collections of Archaeology Museum in Zagreb. A more recent study of uh, Neukam et al. that investigated metagenomic and pathogen content of Egyptian mummies and reconstructed the microbial composition of mummified remains throughout 1,800 years. But beyond disease, um, advance in genomic and proteomic technologies open the gates to research in diverse microbial communities that shaped and influenced our course of history from human behavior, diet, lifestyle and the environment. Suscrofa or domestic pig is widely used as an animal analogue in forensic research, as it is believed to decompose similarly to human cadavers. In this study, a total of 22 pieces of pork belly and 32 body parts were utilised. The animals reached a weight between 30 to 40 kilograms before they were dismembered in slaughterhouse. Domestic pigs were killed seven hours before the start of the trials. Uh, they were kept in refrigerated conditions and delivered in plastic bags. All animal analogues were antibiotic free. Dismemberments included five cuts to separate the head and the front and the back limbs from the torso. The first cut to detach the head from the rest of the body is in the area of the cervical vertebrae. The second and third cuts were above the forelimbs, and the last two cuts were above the hind limbs. The dilution plate method with a broad spectrum bacterial enumeration was utilized for the viable count, or just simply VC. Gram staining was carried out from the swab skin and muscle of representative samples. Photomicrography was used to take pictures of bacterial colonies using a microscope before they were categorized into gram-positive or gram-negative. For the taphonomic analysis, the decay model accommodated terrestrial and aquatic postmortem changes as presented in the table. To establish the biomass loss, the weight of each body part was calculated at the start and the end of the experiment using an electronic scale. The impact of ambient temperature on cadaver mass loss was statistically analyzed with the Crosco Wallis test. Viable counts of bacteria and the gram staining were considered qualitative microbiological methods and suitable for statistical analysis in a current study design. Data were hence collected and discussed in terms of approximate numbers and their characteristics were used to support or contrast quantitative methods. A total of 22 samples was designed for microbiological analysis. 
out of which 16 or 4 in each category was wrapped and incubated. During harvest, three meat pieces and one control per category were analysed for viable count and gram stain. The method was repeated at the end of the trial. Porcini cut to measure 5 cm in width and 5 cm in length were wrapped in cling film and placed in autoclaved glass jam jars in incubators. To allow oxygen access, jar lids were pierced. Wrapped samples were exposed to two sets of ambient temperatures, category A or 20 Celsius and category D or 30 Celsius. The controls were reduced oxygen conditions as in double wrapped samples. The length of all experiments was 28 days, with the harvest taking place halfway through. Six animal heads and six feet, and two heads and two feet controls were used for each category, making a total of 32 body parts, including one repeated trial. Animal elements were weighted and photographed at the start with attention being paid that no insects entered the wrapper. Pig heads weighted approximately 5.22 kilos and pig feet 0.75 kilos. Body parts were wrapped individually in heavy duty plastic waste bags and sealed with gaff tape. Samples were then deposited individually into fabric storage boxes and left to decompose undisturbed for 28 days. Those in category A were exposed to the room temperature averaging 20.8 Celsius and samples in category D decayed in a heated room at an averaging temperature of 26.1 Celsius. The controls were body parts left to decay double wrapped in two plastic bags, the inner one packed top up into the bottom of the outer and double sealed. Skin and muscle tissues from the remains were swapped at the beginning and at the end of all trials to ensure body flora and microbial numbers are comparable with the parallel protein studies. Ambient temperatures were monitored hourly with tiny tags. Transparent bin liners were used for two samples with a thermometer left inside so the temperature could be recorded daily. At the end of the trial, animal elements were again visually observed for any signs of insect succession. They were then cleaned, weighted and photographed before being classified into the decay stages. Swapped pochine muscle areas had a higher number of colonies. Average was 4.3 times 10 on a power of 5. In comparison to the tested pochine skin, average was 3.1 times 10 on a power of 5. Predominantly gram-negative bacteria were identified from a test of samples. Gram-positive colonies were found in small numbers on swapped skin areas from animal heads and feet. The increase of viable count in pork belly pieces incubated at 20 Celsius was noticeable from the start of the experiment, with numbers over 100 per swab during the harvest time. The pattern of microbial growth for similar in agus incubated at 30 Celsius, with harvest figures recorded over 100 each. Fungi grown on rose bengal agar were in large varieties, which was also the case with bacteria grown on R2A and McConkey agars. A single race oversized mushroom cap shade colony grew on rose bengal plate on image one. Uh, bacteria grown on R2A on image 2 and McConkey agar plates image 3 from muscle tissue were in contrast, small in size and mostly white creamy in colour. Six samples left to decompose in anaerobic conditions also rose in numbers from the start to the harvest point and the decline at the end of the experiment. Samples exposed to the higher temperature were higher in numbers during harvest time and lower in numbers at the end of the trial. The number of microorganisms in both anaerobic settings, however, was higher than the main samples or double wrap controls at the end of the trials. Gram stain of pork belly incubated at 30 Celsius on r plate revealed pink rods, suggesting gram negative bacteria being engaged in the decay process. This was also the case with McConkey agar incubated at 20 Celsius. Gram stain of the control sample in category A exhibited large purple fungi, shown on the image, and the control sample of category D exhibited a mixture of bacteria on R2A and McConkey plates. The Kruskal Wallis test measured the difference in biomass loss between two microenvironments and yielded significant results for both wrapped heads and wrapped feet. 
Thermometers inside a bin liners recorded a difference in temperature of up to 2 Celsius degrees higher in comparison with the ambient temperature outside. All animal heads in category A were classified into active decay stage and the heads in category D into advanced decay stage, which is shown on the first image. There was visible discoloration of the skin with the detachment of body elements including ears and mandibles. Skin and liquid are coming off and bones were starting to show. Animal feed decomposed slower than animal heads. In category D, they exemplified morphological changes characteristic of active decay, and in category A, mostly early disintegration stage, shown in image 2. Skin discoloration and sagging were evident as substantial greasy substances were released, with cartilage and tendons exposed. Control samples from both categories and for both body parts visually appear to decay much slower, with all eight specimens being categorized into the putrefaction stage. On touch, however, it became apparent that they either crumbled or disintegrated into a paste. No adipose or desiccation was recorded on any of the specimens. In conclusion, temperature as the main variable known to affect the decay of whole bodies was tested for its impact on the decomposition of wrapped body parts. The slow decay between the double wrap control and especially anaerobic conditions showed the reduced oxygen influence for gene decomposition, so it can be cautiously concluded that neither strict aerobic nor strict anaerobic bacteria were mostly involved in the composition of the meat, but facultative bacteria that survived and thrived with or without oxygen. Gram staining completed throughout the trials showed mostly gram-negative bacteria that are associated with the intestine tract, hence possibly passed on to samples from contaminated knives in the slaughterhouse. By exemplifying a mix of yeast, gram-positive and gram-negative colonies, the control conditions however indicated that the reduced oxygen levels combined with temperature can influence the type of bacterial species. So Scroffer body parts confirmed the importance of temperature in biomass loss. Differential decay was shown between the main samples with animal heads overall losing more weight, 36.96%, than feet, 31.32%. The controls indicated a specific decomposition pattern in reduced oxygen settings. Morphological changes supported these findings, showing that animal elements decayed faster in higher temperature settings. The control also revealed the decay specific for tightly wrapped remains that once out of the bin liner could not be fitted into any decomposition stage. Experiments involving decomposition in a wrapped environment had several limitations. Firstly, although gram staining indicated mostly gram negative bacteria to be involved in decay, there are viable but not culturable bacteria that cannot be grown under the conditions used. This way, further analysis is outside the scope of this project. Hence, it can only tentatively be concluded that body microbiota is the main agency in the decay of body parts. Secondly, although the decay rates were statistically significant, the experiment omitted the succession of flies, other insects, and the presence of clothing items, making the conclusions not directly applicable to field cases. A short temperature span were used in the experiment also. Different temperatures ranges may well have produced different results. Because the wrapped remains were not an obstacle to microbial decomposers under control conditions, they are unlikely to be in the field either, however. Established decomposition patterns therefore may serve as a basis for further research on microbial single limb decay. More studies are especially needed to focus on the difference in change of microbial communities with possible application to the post-mortem microbial clock for dismembered body parts. Finally, I include full references for the studies referred to in this presentation. Thank you for your attention.